Hi, my name is Matt Duff. I am an application engineer covering precision amplifiers, specifically instrumentation amplifiers. But today we're going to cover an op amp, an op amp in a non inverting configuration, and how to calculate the noise of that uh, non inverting configuration. So here we've got the configuration. We have the ADA 4004, it's a low noise uh, op amp, and it's in a gain of 101. So we have 100 kilo ohms here and 1 kilo ohm here. Now, uh, when we do a noise, when we calculate noise for an amplifier configuration, we go and we ground all the voltage sources. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ground our input signal. Now the interesting thing to note is because we ground our voltage sources, the noise, figuring out the noise for a non-inverting configuration is exactly the same as an inverting configuration. So an inverting configuration, you have your ground up here and your input signal here, but because you ground your input signal, um, the calculations are exactly the same. So just keep that in mind that what we talk about today applies equally well to an inverting configuration. Okay, so when we do a, the noise calculations for an amplifier configuration, what we want to do is we want to calculate the resistor noise, the current noise of the amplifier and the voltage noise of the amplifier. So these three noise sources are what will determine the noise of our system. So let's look into how, do, how we do that. Okay, so the first thing we want to look at is this 100 kilo ohm resistor. And we want to know what the noise of this is. Now remember, and if you don't know this shortcut, it's a very nice one to memorize, is that a 1 kilo ohm resistor has 4 nanovolts per hertz noise. And in order to get the noise of any other resistor, you just take the square root of the value in kilo ohms and you multiply it by that 4 nanovolts per hertz. So for our 100 kilo ohm, we take the square root of 100 and we multiply that by 4. So we get 40 nanovolts per root hertz. So I'm just going to draw in a little noise source here uh, that, that represents that, that noise. Now note, this noise source is on the output of the amplifier. And so our amplifier is going to do whatever it needs to do to compensate for this 40 nanovolts per hertz. So this 40 nanovolts per hertz shows up directly at the output. So I'm going to write that down as our first noise con contributor. So for all of these calculations, we're going to calculate referred to output. And then at the end, we're going to look at what it is referred to the input. So our contribution from R1 is 40 nanovolts per hertz. Let's look at R2. So R2 is a 1 kilo ohm resistor. So if I draw in our voltage source here, recall that it's 4 nanovolts per hertz. 4. Draw that nice and strong there. And if you look, this voltage source is as if it's at the input of an inverting configuration. So uh, this voltage source we multiply by negative 100, and since there's really no concept of negative or positive with noise sources, uh, it really just ends up being this 4 times 100. So refer to the output, this will turn into 400 nanovolts per hertz. So R2, 400. Now this is something I want to point out here, is that whenever you're in a high gain configuration, your R2 will always dominate over your R1. So you always, because R2 will see this extra gain, you'll always get a bigger uh, noise source out of R2. Even though it's a smaller resistor, it'll end up contributing more noise. Now when you get down to lower gains, uh, that's not so much the case. And at a gain of 2, these the noise for the two resistors will be the same. And at gains lower than 2, R1 will dominate. But at high gains, which is what you should be using for low noise circuits, uh, R2 will dominate. Okay? So now we want to do the effect of current noise. And if we go and look at our data sheet, we'll find out that the 4004 has current noise of 1.2 picoamps per root hertz. So that current noise comes in through here. That current multiplies times the parallel combination of these resistances, which I'm just going to call 1 kilo ohm. So this 1 kilo ohm times that 1.2 picoamps. So we get 1.2 nanovolts. But I rem remember, 
we multiply that by our gain of 101 because we're doing everything referred to output. So our current noise contribution, I call it 4004i, is going to be, what do we say, 1.2 nanovolts times 101, so 120 nanovolts per hertz. Uh, if you had resistance at the input here, you would also need to multiply that current by the resistance as well as figuring out whatever noise contribution of that resistor itself. But we don't have the resistors here, so we don't have to worry about that. Then the last thing we, we figure out is the voltage noise of the amplifier. So I'm going to say we have a little voltage source here. That's 1.8 nanovolts per hertz. Again, that just comes from the data sheet. We multiply that by 101. I think we get something like uh, 182 or something like that. 4004V. And that's the contribution from the voltage noise. So now what we do is we want to sum all of these together. So what we do is we do the sum of squares. So you would square every one of these. Add them together, take the square root. And let me consult my little cheat sheet for what that ends up being. That ends up being 457 nanovolts per hertz. And if we refer that back to the input, we get 4.52. Now, something I want to point out here is that 4.52 is a lot bigger than the 1.8 nanovolts per hertz voltage noise of this amplifier. So we're not really getting the best performance out of this circuit. And the main reason for that is that the resistors that we chose weren't terribly intelligent choices. What we should have done is we should have used much lower values for these resistors. And then the con contribution from both the resistor noise, we saw that it's very large, it's, it's 400 nanovolts per hertz, as well as the current noise coming through these resistors would be much lower. And so if we use much lower value resistor, much lower valued resistors, we would get something closer to this theoretical minimum of 1.8 nanovolts per hertz. So just remember that when you're doing low noise designs, make sure you keep your resistors small. So that, uh, to sum up, is how you do the calculation of a non-inverting amplifier configuration. Uh, we also have some other presentations on how to convert the spectral density noise that we talked about today in nanovolts per hertz to RMS or peak-to-peak, -peak. so you may want to take a look at those presentations. Thanks.